The Book of Disquiet by Fernando Pessoa How is it done? By not doing. By dreaming insistently. By performing our daily duties but living, simultaneously, in the imagination. Traveling far and wide, in the geography of our minds. Conquering like Caesar, amid the blaring trumpets of our reverie. Experiencing intense sexual pleasure, in the privacy of our fantasy. Feeling everything in every way, not in the flesh, which always tires, but in the imagination. Nunca amamos alguém. Amamos, tão somente, a ideia que fazemos de alguém. É um conceito nosso, em suma, é a nós mesmos, que amamos. I've always rejected being understood. To be understood is to prostitute oneself. I prefer to be taken seriously for what I'm not, remaining humanly unknown, with naturalness and all due respect. I've never done anything but dream. This, and this alone, has been the meaning of my life. My only real concern has been my inner life. To write is to forget. Literature is the most agreeable way of ignoring life. Music soothes, the visual arts exhilarates, the performing arts, such as acting and dance, entertain. Literature, however, retreats from life by turning it into slumber. Literature simulates life. A novel is a story of what never was, a play is a novel without narration. A poem is the expression of ideas or feelings a language no one uses, because no one talks in verse. The essence of what I desire is simply this, to sleep away life. I asked for very little from life, and even this little was denied me. A nearby field, a ray of sunlight, a little bit of calm along with a bit of bread, not to feel oppressed by the knowledge that I exist, not to demand anything from others, and not to have others demand anything from me, this was denied me, like the spare change we might deny a beggar, not because we're mean-hearted, but, because we don't feel like unbuttoning our coat. Friends, not one. Just a few acquaintances, who imagine they feel something for me, and, who might be sorry, if a train ran over me, and the funeral was on a rainy day. Being tired of all illusions, and of everything about illusions. The loss of illusions, the uselessness of having them. The prefatigue of having to have them, in order to lose them, the sadness of having had them, the intellectual shame of having had them, knowing that they would have to end this way. Today, Suddenly, I reached an absurd but unerring conclusion. In a moment of enlightenment, I realized that I'm nobody, absolutely nobody. When the lightning flashed, I saw that what I had thought to be a city, was in fact a deserted plain and, in the same sinister light, that revealed me to myself, there seemed to be no sky above it. I was robbed of any possibility of having existed before the world. If I was ever reincarnated, I must have done so without myself, without a self to reincarnate. I myself, am the center that exists only because the geometry of the abyss demands it. I am the nothing around which all this spins, I exist so that it can spin, I am a center that exists only because every circle has one. I, I myself, am the well in which the walls have fallen away to leave only viscous slime. I am the center of everything, surrounded by the great nothing. Freedom is the possibility of isolation. You are free, if you can withdraw from people, not having to seek them out for the sake of money, company, love, glory or curiosity, none of which can thrive in silence and solitude. If you can't live alone, you were born a slave, you may have all the splendors of the mind and the soul, in which case you're a noble slave, 
or an intelligent servant, but you're not free. What has happened to us has happened to everyone, or, only us. If to everyone, then it's no novelty, and if only to us, then it won't be understood. Eternal tourists of ourselves, there is no landscape but what we are. We possess nothing, for we don't even possess ourselves. We have nothing because we are nothing. What hand will I reach out, and to what universe? The universe isn't mine, it's me. Once we're able to see this world as an illusion and a phantasm, then we can see everything that happens to us as a dream, as something that pretended to exist while we were sleeping. And we will become subtly and profoundly indifferent towards all of life's setbacks and calamities. Those who die turned a corner, which is why we've stopped seeing them, those who suffer pass before us like a nightmare, if we feel, or like an unpleasant daydream, if we think. And even our own suffering won't be more than this nothingness. In modern life the world belongs to the stupid, the insensitive and the disturbed. The right to live and triumph is today, earned with the same qualifications one requires to be interned in a madhouse. Amorality, hypomania, and an incapacity for thought. The consciousness of life's unconsciousness is the oldest tax levied on the intelligence. I never paid any attention to people who told me to go out and live. I belonged always to whatever was far from me, and to whatever I could never be. Anything that was not mine, however base, always seemed to me to be full of poetry. The only thing I ever loved was pure nothingness. We may know that the work we continue to put off doing will be bad. Worse, however, is the work we never do. A work that's finished is at least finished. It may be poor, but it exists, like the miserable plant in the lone flower pot of my neighbor, who's crippled. That plant is her happiness, and sometimes it's even mine. What I write, bad as it is, may provide some hurt or sad soul a few moments of distraction from something worse. That's enough for me, or it isn't enough, but it serves some purpose, and so it is with all of life. We never know self-realization. We are two abysses, a well staring at the sky. I am still obsessed with creating a false world, and will be until I die. To organize our life in such a way that it becomes a mystery to others, that those who are closest to us, will only be closer to not knowing us. That is how I've shaped my life, almost without thinking about it, but I did it with so much instinctive art that even to myself, I've become a not entirely clear and definite individual. To possess something is to lose it. To feel something without possessing it is to keep it, because in that way one extracts its essence. All effort is pointless, but it passes the time. Reasoning is sterile, but amusing. Loving is tedious, but possibly preferable to not loving. May I at least carry, to the boundless possibility contained in the abyss of everything, the glory of my disillusion, like that of a great dream, and the splendor of not believing, like a banner of defeat. A banner in feeble hands, but still and all a banner, dragged through mud and the blood of the weak, but raised high for who knows what reason. Whether in defiance, or as a challenge, or in mere desperation, as we vanish into quicksand. No one knows for what reason, because no one knows anything, and the sand swallows those with banners as it swallows those without. And the sand covers everything, my life, my prose, my eternity. I carry my awareness of defeat, like a banner of victory. 
To live, is, to not think.